the fuck? Network. 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 This is the end of the bench podcast, and as you just heard, the dopest DJ in the land, DJ Knox, say this is built for this network, the end of the bench podcast, and uh, I want to make sure you understand this will be the last afternoon show. If you've been with me for the long haul, you realize that my show used to come on Wednesday evenings. Um, now I'm going back to the old format, and what I'm going to do is make this announcement and move. This will be the last show. I want to give a big ups to everybody who has supported me thus far. Big ups for all of you. And as uh, I always do, I want to give big ups to my background listeners. Much love, much respect. If you don't know that you're a background listener, it is simply because you haven't created a profile and come into the chat room and say, what's up? And because you didn't do that, I will, I cannot announce you in broad and ambiguous terms. And because I can't do that, you will be a background listener up until and including that moment. Otherwise, this is the In The Bench Podcast. Hosted by H. Rap B, and then you know how I do it every week. It was taught to me that when you are speaking publicly, you must give homage to your ancestors, the people who made it possible for you to be here. When you do that, you send respect and blessings up to them, and you get respect and blessings and protections in return. So, each and every one of my shows, I start off by giving my ancestors big ups and props and showing them proper respect. That respect is to the Whitmore family, the Pollock family, the Cotton family, the Harper family, the Bailey family, the Lansdowne family, the Liggins family, the Duncan family. You know me and my clan. We are the Williams clan. What's up? And as usual, man, thank you for taking time out of your day to participate in this foolishness that I call a podcast, as usual, and it will be that way until into perpetuity, if you don't know what perpetuity is, it pause, go look it up, and then you'll know, oh, that means forever. I'll be coming at you from Built to This Network, and I'm going to have a full plate of information to divulge to my people, and if not, sucks to be you. Now. Thank you for everybody in the chat room who's tuning in. It's always good to chop it up with you. What I'm going to do is announce my chat room and get this party started. Right. First and foremost, one of the original bench warmers is my main man, Joe from Houston. My little bro, big ups to Joe. Or uh, Saskatchewan. Just in case you didn't here. Joe from Saskatchewan. Big ups to Joe. That's much love, man. And then I got my man, the unemployed comedian, Brethren on the network. He goes by the name uh Victor Morrison. He knows why I'm calling him an unemployed comedian. He knows. He knows. But big ups to my brother. I, he usually has a show comes on Friday. He'll be keeping us posted when he will and when he won't be posting. Tune in to the Victor Morrow Show. That's the Victor Morrow Channel. If you need good information, you will need to be informed and you want to be in the loop. Victor Morrow is where you go. Next up is Queen of the Haters from 14th Place here in Chicago. Uh, she goes by the name of Miss Unique, but it's a bunch of people out here just like her. The uh, Miss Unique Center. Yep, she's queen of the haters, but she's my dog. She's my dog. Next up is the princess of the haters. Um, she's upset that she's no longer in my family, and I understand that. I mean, my family's pretty dope. I kicked out. Uh, she is holding it down for the left coast. She my dog, too, but she's still hanging out with that low-key character, so she's uh, equally a hater. 
Uh, she goes by the name of Low Key Submissive. She's in the building. 310 is in the building. Now, of course, she's a hater, too. I got a couple haters in the show. You know, you got to accept everybody. Hopefully, we can convert them. And from MCDE, the lovely DJ LT, hit that Abby so you can get some dance tones, get some dope music. She's in the building. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Next up, I hope she, she ain't getting no hater juice on her, because hanging around those two haters, you would definitely get some hater sauce on you. Next up, live from D.C. It is the lovely, the beautiful, Moni in the middle. Moni's in the building. Thank you for the support, Moni. <laughs> I'm in D.C. Hold your purse tight. I'm not saying Victor Morrow snatches purses, but uh, anytime he's around, it's a purse snatching situation. I'm not saying it's him. I'm just saying it's, it's been known to happen when Victor Morrow's around. That's all I'm saying. Next up, I got my main man, Wanga Williams. He needs to put a picture on this Abby. That M kind of sucks. It's kind of whack. Staff, you put a picture up there. Put a picture of you walking away or something. Wanga Williams, thanks for the uh, support, my brother. <laughs> Much love. Now. As I ease on up the road, I got the number one chief rocker who don't drink no cheap vodka. The master blaster, a.k.a. my co-host on Brothers Gonna Work It Out, the rock and rap show. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., the number one chief rocker. In the <laughs> and just for the record, I hope all the bad things are like, no, I ain't gonna do that. I'm a, I'm a, I was no hit on this Giants, but I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. That's my man. He's my co-host. He gonna get a pass on the co-host side of the game. With that being said, it looks as if we're kind of low on the. I got the number one coach in the state of Georgia doing big things with the youth. I got my man Cool Sale in the building. The king to make a woman mad club. And I'm signing up tonight. <laughs> My man, Cool Sale. Thanks for the support, Cool Sale. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now that we got all the haters out the way, don't speak to Cool Sale. He's my friend, you two haters, back to back haters. Back to back haters trying to speak to my homie, Cool Sales. He still gonna chop y'all up when y'all get out of line. So don't be trying to shine with the brother. With that being said, thank y'all for joining this foolishness that I call the Enter the Bench Podcast. We on built for this network. I got a whole lot of stuff to get off my chest this afternoon. I'm saying with my chest. Oh, I didn't know I had my main man, my big bro from Chicago, north side in the building, the king of the near north side. My man Macy's in the building. One of the best people you ever meet. Make him your friend. Y'all the friend to the end. Never waver. Never give you no half stepping. That's what Macy's all about. He keeps it one thousand. He, he it's too much to say he keep it one hundred. He might keep it a million. He might. He actually might keep it a million on the real side of the game. Now, with that being said, look, man, it's a whole lot going on in the sports world now, nah, man. Each and every day, it's a bunch of foolishness, a bunch of nonsense. I'm gonna break y'all off from top to bottom. We're going to start with this nonsense. You know what? I'm going to start off with golf. I have a conspiracy theory. Anybody who knows me, they know, they know I'm a conspiracy theorist. And seeing how you really can't trust anything coming out of uh, mainstream America in 2019, whatever you hear, always look at it with a, look, with a little bit of trepidation. I learned that word last week. Listen to Victor Morrow's show. I figured I'd work it in this week. But, uh, I got a little uh, uh, conspiracy theory that I'm thinking about because that's how, you know, I watch sports all the time. It's what it's how I relax my mind, let my conscience be free, and get down to the sound of EPMD. Big ups to be EPMD in the building. Much love. Y'all know that. Yeah. But with that being said, uh, 
Tiger Woods has been struggling mightily since the Masters. And I don't remember any big time names being in contention at the Masters. Maybe I'm wrong because I'm not well versed in the world of golf. The PGA is something that is really not on, on at the top of my uh, list of things to pay attention to. You know, a lot of brothers went to grab golf clubs when Tiger Woods is out there. Oh man, Tiger Woods, the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stick to doing what I'm doing because I'm not paying no extra money to do that nonsense. That's how I felt. Right, wrong, or indifferent. That's how I was getting down. That's how I was moving and shaking. But with that being said, golf was big time for well, as long as Tiger reigned supreme in America. Golf was reigning supreme. You had a bunch of brothers. You had a bunch of people from uh, uh, non-Caucasian communities running out buying golf clubs, running out getting shirts and gloves and clubs and getting lessons and buying video games. He was at the top of the food chain. And since Tiger Woods is, uh, well, Tiger Woods has not dominated in about five or seven years, golf has fallen out of the preview of, uh, or out of the uh, lateral vision, the prayer view, out of the, out of the mainstream. And a lot of people are not paying attention anymore. Personally, I believe the PGA, I'm not saying that they told Tiger they were going to do this. I'm not saying that they told the television audience they weren't going to do this. But one thing that happens when Tiger's on TV and Tiger's doing well, the ratings are sky high. When the ratings are sky high, they make more money. When they make more money, they're happy. I do believe they told a couple of these golfers to fall back and let Tiger win because if Tiger is winning, they're making money. And it is a bunch of these guys that would have been 100,000 nairs that are currently millionaires and a bunch of these dudes who are millionaires who are multi-millionaires and some of them close to a half a billion dollars simply because they rode the coattails of Tiger Woods. I believe they expected some of these other young boys to step up and they haven't. They're not going to be that way. It's not going to be that way simply because Tiger Woods is a once in a generation person. You had Arnold Palmer, then you had Jack Nicholson, then, you know, the Golden Bear, then you got Tiger. And after Tiger, you're going to have to wait a generation or two to get somebody else. When Tiger, when Tiger just fading out like Jack did, then you might get another Tiger. These young boys, they have too much going on. So I don't think it'll be a, I think it'll be a very, very long time before we get another big time star like that. But I do believe the PGA set it up. So Tiger will win the Masters and people from, from our community and other disenfranchised communities will start paying attention. Hopefully they'll run out there and do this golf thing again. But nah, you're going to have to go ahead and let Tiger Wood dominate for a little while. Otherwise, people from disenfranchised communities are not going to be paying attention to golf. One, it's an elitist sport. And that's why it took 50, 60, 70 years for somebody from a, a, a non-affluent community to dominate. And it's not like Tiger Woods on food stamps. He wasn't under the Barack Obama plan, but it's going to take a while, y'all. So that's just my theory for the day. And I understand uh, uh, it's tough to buy into conspiracies. But anytime I see somebody dominate the masses or win the masses walking away and they can barely make the cut, I just look at it like this. Bullshit. Every time I see it, every time I see something like that, I think that, man. I just flat out think it. It's just you don't dominate one week and then all of a sudden you just fall off. I just, and then we can talk the health thing and we can talk he got a bad back, he need a backyotomy and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, Tiger Woods doing good for a little while then falling off. That's some bullshit. That's all I got to say about the whole situation. I think they propped him up in order to drive some more people, drive the race, make some more money, see if one of these dudes, these Rory's or these other cats out here, who they just have too much going on. You have to have a single mind in golf. You can't be with the chicks. You can't be out here drinking and kicking it and all that and think you're going to be the next Tiger Woods. You must sacrifice everything. Uh, people thought he was low-key hating back in the day, but uh, the Golden Bear said it. And he was like, look, Tiger's the greatest thing I've seen in a very long time. But well, let's see what it looks like once he gets a family. People say, oh, man, he just mad because Tiger's going to take